here's a problem involving a loop the loop, which is a roller coaster ride which makes a loop like this and then continues on flat as it originally began. And we're told that we have a 152 kilogram cart moving at some speed, VA, when it enters this frictionless loop the loop whose radius is 11 meters. At the top of the loop, the car feels weightless. And it explains, the problem explains, what we mean by weightless is that the normal force is zero. Okay? So here's the idea. If you're out in outer space, right? In your outer space, middle of nowhere, stars and you know, here you are. You are in uh, like a room or something. You don't feel the force of the floor. There's no normal force because there's no gravity to pull you against the floor. So when the normal force is zero, we say that that's the feeling of weightlessness. And since, since in this problem, right, now back to here, we're not actually weightless at the top. We only feel weightless because the normal force is zero. So if we only feel weightless, but we're not actually weightless, because there is gravity, we call that apparent, apparent weightlessness. Like that. Apparent weightlessness, if you can read it. OK. Anyway, for our purposes in this problem, what we care about is the fact that the normal force is 0, which I've underlined in red. So let me write that over here at the top. So I'm going to call this point A, and I'll call the top here point B. So it's the normal force is 0 at B. OK, we have to find the cart's initial speed, VA, when it enters the loop-the-loop. -loop. So when the cart's in the loop-the-loop, -loop, right, this whole time it's moving around, it's moving in a circle, and there is circular motion. So at the top, at the very tippy top, we know, because the car is moving in a circle, that the net force is mv squared over r, v. Oops, and because I already have a v over here, I'm going to call this v here, I'm going to call it v sub v. Let me do that in black. And this way, I won't get confused about which velocity I'm talking about. So let me erase this then. Make it vb squared. In all of these problems, we write the equation, that's step one. Step two is to draw a free body diagram and plug in, substitute something for F net. So at the top, at B, here's the free body diagram. There's my cart, it's just a dot, right? I just represent it with a dot. So at the top, there is gravity pulling da down, like that. And we know that the normal force always perpendicular to the surface, so if we have a horizontal surface like that, it's up. If we have a slanted surface, the normal force is this way. If we have a surface like that, the normal force is this way. And if we keep going, right, if we keep going, when we have a surface here, like that, the normal force is down at an angle. And at the top here, the normal force pushes down. So we have a normal force pushing down too, except that, whoops, I forgot. The normal force is zero. This is zero. So we can erase it. It doesn't exist at the top. In this particular problem, it doesn't exist. So the only force I have, the net force, is mg. That's all there is. Now, we know the net force has to point down at the top because the net centripetal force, right, whenever an object moves in a circle, the net force points toward the center of the circle. So the net force is what I've shown in red. It's pointing down toward the center. And in this equation, this equation, we the golden rule of this equation is we have to plug in a positive net force, right? Because otherwise we mess up uh, the equation. And the reason is because m can only be positive, v squared can only be positive, and r can only be positive. So when we plug f net into the equation, we have to make sure we're plugging in something positive, since the right side can only be positive. And let me take this all away. Okay. 
So f net is down, and to con to ensure that I that I plug in a positive f net into the equation, right? To make sure that I do this correctly, I assign down the positive direction. So wherever f net points is my positive direction. If down is positive, then this mg here is positive because I said down is positive. So when I plug in right here for f net. When I substitute in, I put mg, and I make it positive because mg is pointing down, which I've assigned to be positive. We can cancel out the mass. m cancels. And what we're left with is that g times r equals vd squared. Like that. Okay. g times r equals vd squared. So if we're going to find r, we need to know G and VB. We know G, but we do not know VB. So we need to find VB some other way using another equation. Here's how we find VB. I'm going to erase. I'm going to find VB so that I can plug it in right here and solve for R. To find VB, Let me just table this and move this. Let me erase this just for a second. And move this over here, since we'll come back to it. So to find the velocity of B, I'm going to use conservation of energy. Right? We're told that we have a frictionless loop. We assume there's no air resistance. And so we can say the mechanical energy at A equals the mechanical energy at B. And that means that at point A, right, right here, here's A, at point A, the card is moving forward. It has speed. So it has one half mv squared, where v is the speed at A. When we get to the top, the tippy top, right, at point B, now we have some height from the zero level. And I'm taking this, right, I'm taking the ground as the zero. So at the top, we have some height which means there's mgh. That's one of the energies we have, potential, gravitational potential. And this thing is still moving at the top. It has some speed, vb, which we're trying to find. So if it's moving, we also have 1 half mv squared at the top at point b. So my picture is a little crowded, but what we see is that initially, at a, all we have is 1 half mv squared. And at the end, we have mgh plus 1 half mv final squared. And the final velocity is really the velocity at v. So this is vb squared. Like that. 1 half mvb squared. All right. Make that a little cleaner. Mass in this equation can cancel out, because there's a mass in every single term. So I can say 1, uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything by 2. I'm going to multiply the left by 2, and I'm going to multiply everything over here by 2. And you see that the 2 will cancel like that. This 2 will cancel here. And then when I distribute the 2 to the other term, I'll add a 2 out front. So let me show all of this canceling and what we get at the end. So it'll look like this. Uh, whoops, I canceled out the mass, didn't I? So VA squared is equal to G times H. And now I'm multiplying by 2, right? So I have to add a 2 right there, plus 1 half VB squared, but I'm multiplying by 2. So the half cancels, and I'm left with this. And in place of H, in place of H, what I'm going to write is something very clever, very tricky. Right, so let me erase this. Let me erase the F net arrow and make this all a little neater. Erase that. Right. Make this neater. This is point A. All right, now cleaning it up a little bit, cleaning up my picture. This 
diameter, excuse me, the radius is r, 11, right? So from here to here is 11, and from here to here is another r, that's 11. So the height that the carp has when it's at point b, this height here is equal to r plus r. See that? The height is 2r. So here I can write 2r. And now, if I subtract this from both sides, then the equation becomes va squared minus 4gr equals vb squared. Like that. And yes, uh, now I can erase my work. And we see why why we see we see the next step we see the next thing to do so if we have this equation and we have this equation if this equals vb squared and this equals vb squared then the two things in red are equal to each other right which means va squared minus 4gr equals gr so if i add 4gr to both sides. Now I have 5gr on the right. Like so. 5gr. That's not an r. And I can clearly and easily solve for the initial velocity. It's the square root of 5 times g, which is 9.81, times r, which was 11. And I'm leaving off units for now. But we can see that they work out. And what do I get as my final answer for VA? How many meters per second is this thing, does it have to move at? So that the uh, cart is weightless at the top. Well, square root of 5 times 9.81 times 11.